Okay, so the topic of this talk is uh, rational points on a cubic curve form a group. So first of all, what is a group? So a group is an algebraic structure. I'll just give the definition of group. So in this, you have two things. One is like a set of elements that's noted by G and another is a binary function. Let's call it star. And the properties are, if A and B are two elements in our set G, then uh, A star B also belongs to G. This is basically like any function. This can be, let's say, addition, you can imagine, or multiplication, or any other kind of function. And associativity also holds in groups. So if A star uh, B star C is equal to A star B, uh, it's not necessary that the elements are uh, elements follow commutativity. So, a star b equal to b star a. Not necessary. So basically, this cannot be also equal to. Uh, it's nothing like that. But if this is true, we say our group is abelian group. Just terminology. <clears throat> and then uh, inverses also exist. So for all A in G, there exists A inverse in G such that <coughs> A star A inverse equal to E. Uh, e is the identity element. So in every group, uh, there should be an identity element E such that uh, there exists E such that A star E equal to E star A equal to A. So is there any doubt in the definition of group? So uh, these are the compulsory things and this is not a necessary condition. Uh, in our lecture, we'll prove that rational points on a cubic curve form an abelian group. So commutativity will hold also. Okay, so I assume the definition is clear. Uh, let's move on to the next part, which is some definitions. So these definitions are like more like obvious also, but I'll just state it for sanity. So we say a point x comma y is a rational point if x comma y belong to the set of rational numbers similarly for the other things you can see here uh, we say a line is rational line if equation of the line which is like ax plus by plus c equal to zero and then abc is rational uh, this is an important result which you should know that two uh, rational lines intersect at a rational point. If you want, you can also try to prove it. It's not uh, hard to prove as such. <clears throat> and then a rational curve, uh, like I think you can obviously see that if all the coefficients are rational numbers, then we say that the curve is rational. Now let's move on to the Bassett's duplication form. Uh, so uh, in like earlier times, there was this equation y square minus x cube equal to c and you have to find the solution of this for all c or prove that like there exists no solution for some c and stuff so you have to characterize the solution for c's and uh x comma y comma c belongs to integer notice that c is fixed here do they belong to integer I think x and y belong to rational numbers. Yeah. Uh, this is not true. X and y belong to rationals and uh, C is a fixed integer. So uh, the solution to this was given by Batchett and that's why we say it like Batchett's duplication formula. So 
So uh, it states that if x not comma y not is a rational solution to this Diophantine equation, then this is another rational solution to the same Diophantine equation. And you can like find other uh, solutions uh, by doing this repeatedly. And uh, he also showed that like if C uh, is not in the set like one comma minus four thirty two, and neither of uh, x not and y not is zero, then uh, repeating the process leads to infinitely many rational solutions. So uh, this looks very complex, right? How do you come up with such a random polynomial, which has like a four degree numerator and then two degree denominator, and then here it's like six degree numerator and a three degree denominator? It's not something you can like. Uh, guess also. So, uh, uh, there's a question. Yeah, 1 and minus 432 are random too. I mean, like, they are probably not that random, but there must be some logic. Actually, I haven't thought about that. That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any doubts still here? I'll take that as a no. So, uh, how do we get the solution of Bajet's equation? Uh, the graph of Bajet equation looks something like this. And uh, this thing basically like the width of this thing depends on uh, what your C is and steepness also. But like uh, it approximately looks like this. <clears throat> this is the graph of y square minus x cube equal to C. Now, in the Bajet's duplication formula, it says that you have already one rational solution to the Diophantine equation. So let's say, I'll zoom in. this is a rational solution uh, to this equation, which you already know. Then, if I take any rational line passing through this point, Also, uh, yeah, this is any rational line passing through this point. And we can see there will be like basically two more intersections. Uh, you cannot see the other one, but it will be somewhere like here. Can you say something about these intersections? If this will be rational point or something, anything. Let's just call like this intersection is P and let's just call the other intersection is P. What can you say about P and Q? Any ideas? Uh, like the slope of the line is rational, right? Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so we can do something like we write the equation of the line as y minus y naught over x minus x naught equals some slope okay. m. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, from this we get y is equal to some expression in x, m, x naught, and y naught. Yeah, let's just say y equal to ax plus b, the equation is. Yeah, and then we plug this in the equation, like y square minus x cube of c. Yeah, right. And you'll get basically two more points. But uh, the thing is, this doesn't tell anything about p or q, that if p and q will be rational points or not. Because when you plug this, you will basically get like a cubic in x. And if you remove this solution, it will be a quadratic. And quadratic can have irrational solutions also. Mm. Okay, right? yeah. So this is not very helpful. But what if we consider the tangent to this point and consider this intersection? Uh, let's call this R. Can we say that R is a rational point? Yeah, because then the same thing uh, in this equation we have that x not like x not would be a double root of the yeah. cubic in x. yes 
and then we'll only have like a linear equation which will have a rational solution because all the coefficients are rational so what just happened is uh, when we uh, define a tangent so let's say uh, yeah so like in a tangent uh, how do i say this right so if you consider this line and uh, the equation of this curve only right but a line and a cubic in general like when it's not a tangent intersects at three points but in the case of tangent there are only two points so uh, what we say is that this point of tangency has multiplicity two How you can think about it is uh, when you're defining a tangent, uh, you basically bring like two points arbitrarily close to each other. So like this is not a tangent. You bring it closer and closer until both of these points merge, converge to one point. So basically these are two points at a single location. That's why we say like it has multiplicity two. This was just for visualization. So now when you have this equation, y equal to ax plus b and you plug it in uh, here you'll get a cubic in x two roots of which will be x naught so like when you divide this by x minus x naught squared you will uh, this is a cubic and this is a quadratic so you'll be left with a linear in x and remember that all the uh, coordinates which we have all the equations which we have are rational equation like all the coefficients are rational so this is also have like rational coefficients, which is why this point will be a rational point. So is this clear? Yes. Now suppose uh, let's make a new diagram. This is let's see. I give you two rational points, P and are rational points. What can you say about this intersection R? This is basically PQ intersection, the qubit at the third point. It is also rational for the same reason as earlier. Yes. We are rational. Yes, this is rational, rational because slope is rational. Yeah, slope is rational, and then uh, two points are rational. Let's say x one comma y one, and x two comma y two. So we can see that if we have one rational point, how we can get more rational points on a cubic? This is exactly what Batchard did. So uh, something like this. Let's say you have this point. Uh, you have this one point. He drew a tangent and found another point Q. Uh, okay, ignore that picture. Let's just work with this picture. Uh, uh, we can like draw a tangent and get another point Q. So we'll have two points now. And then we can draw another tangent to get more points. So let's just pick any two points out of the some points which we have initially. We can draw a line joining and then we get another rational point P3. Uh, we just drew a tangent we get p4 and we can do this like uh, as many times as we want and get the uh, more and more rational points on the cube so uh, is this clear that how rational points work basically it's sort of like just to develop intuition about rational points uh, yes or no would help yes okay so uh, let's move on uh, we'll first discuss two important theorems which will help us prove our uh, main thing which is proving the them abelian group the first is bezout's theorem according to the bezout's theorem a curve of degree m and a curve of degree n intersect in exactly mn points uh, now for the this theorem to be valid there are few things which you should keep in mind first is we use projective plane so that we have points at infinity and uh, the intersections are being counted with multiplicities 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल पॉइंट ऑफ पॉइंट ऑफ टेंजेंसी एज अ जस्ट होल्ड इज अ पॉइंट विद मल्टीप्लिसिटी ग्रेटर देन वन यूजली टू एंड वी शुड ऑल्सो लव कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर फॉर कॉर्डिनेट्स Uh, I still don't know why this makes sense, but this is what like theoretically the theorem says. So yeah. Also, to uh, visualize this, you can think like this. Suppose you have a line and another line. Both are degree one thing, or degree one equations. They are not curves. They intersect exactly at uh, one into one, which is one point. So like, if these are not parallel, they'll intersect here. If these are parallel. Since it is the projective plane, they will intersect at line at infinity. And uh, let's say a line and a circle. This intersects at two points. And then, if you just consider a tangent, it will have multiplicity too. What if they don't intersect at all? Right. Uh, I don't remember the exact coordinates, but the thing is, a circle always passes through a fixed point in the complex plane. So, uh, like, if this is like this, uh, it's something. So like, basically, if we just take the circles equation and the lines equation and put them together, yeah. the solutions for x will be the discriminant of the quadratic will be negative. So your right. solution will be the complex plane. Yes. Okay. That works that way, yep. Yeah. Uh, and similarly, you can do it for like two circles. So, like, if you have two circle equations, and these are two intersections, right? But uh, note that these are not with multiplicity two; the multiplicity is one only. So, uh, you have basically one and one two intersection, but you need four intersection according to Bezout's theorem. So the other two come from the complex plane, which you can like, if you allow the use of complex numbers, you'll get that. Okay. So we'll not do the proof of this because it was very complicated and I didn't read it fully myself. Yeah. But, uh, okay. The main thing we need for this theorem is just the case for M equal to N equal to three in our lecture, nothing else. Oh, also one thing I, I, I should specify is, uh, do you know what a point of inflection is? Is anyone there who doesn't know? Yeah, me. Okay. So, uh, if you have a, like any curve, this won't be like a very good example of the curve, but let's just say any curve. And if it changes from concave to convex. Okay. Or convex to concave. Uh, and the point at like suppose this is a point. Before this, it was concave, and after this, it's convex. Let's say. Then this point is called point of inflection. Um, Does it make sense? So the so this play um if before and after the point. It changes from concave to convex. Yeah, or, or convex vice versa. Convex. That's yes. called okay. Okay, now it will be yeah. Uh, so like, uh, uh, not really maxima minima. Like maxima is something uh, this thing. Maxima we are not dealing with a uh, concavity or convexity here. So point of inflection has a uh, multiplicity three. This is just like a random mm -hmm. side fact. We saw like a point with multiplicity two, which is like tangency. Uh, so here it has multiplicity three. Uh, not related to our lecture, but I just wanted to state it as a fact. Okay, let's move on to the next thing, which is uh, Kyle Bakara. Uh, don't judge on my pronunciation. What this says is, suppose you have two cubics, C1 and C2. In how many points will they intersect? Cubics. Anybody? Nine points. Yes. Uh, they intersected nine points because of the Bezout theorem, which we just read. Suppose we have another cubic C, which passes through 
eight of these nine points. Then this theorem says C also passes through ninth intersection point. Okay, so now uh, for the proof of this, uh, equation of a cubic, let's say C, looks something like uh, AX cube plus BX square Y plus CXY square. I'll just write it, not say it, it's too long. Or the question is something like this. So variables, or do we need to define a cubic? We need 10 variables. But is this correct? Or is there any flaw in this? Do we actually need 10 variables or more than 10 or less than 10? Okay, someone says divide by A. Yes, that's the correct idea. We What we do is we divide whole equation by A. B by A, C by A, D by A, and so on. And this is zero by A, so it will just remain zero. Now this is one, this variable we actually know. And we can say B by A as like B dash, C dash, so on till like J dash. So we now need nine variables instead of 10 variables. And uh, okay, so what if A is equal to zero? We cannot divide by A then. What do we do then? divide by D. Okay, it's possible D is also zero. Uh, but in that case, uh, this won't be a, okay, it will still be a cubic anymore. Uh, so the point is, if A is zero, we already know one variable. So we just need like nine more variables to define the cubic. Or if you want to say like, you can just divide by B, C, D, everything until everything is zero. In which case it's like not a cubic anymore, right? So uh, we basically just need only nine variables to define a cubic. Does this make sense? Okay, I'll assume it's a yes. So in some sense, we say that a cubic is nine dimensional. Okay, suppose we have this cubic now. And I say, oh, what is even happening with this? Oops. And I say that a given point x not comma y not lies on this cube. Then, uh, what can you say about like what information does this give you? So, if I just place uh, x not comma y not in this equation, then this becomes a constant. Like this will be a number, right? X not is a number. This is also a number. So we get our equation in B, C, D, so on till I comma. Okay, so since um since the x zero comma y zero is a uh, rational, wouldn't it mean like all the coefficients have to be rational as well? Uh, not all necessarily. Uh, let's take the equation like uh, root two x minus. 
रूट टू वाय इक्वल टू जीरो एक्स कॉमा वाई यू कैन टेक वन कॉमा वन इज अ सोल्यूशन एंड द प्रोफेशन आर नॉट Right. Uh, also, in this case, we are just dealing with rational coefficients now, so no need to worry if they are rational or not. Okay. But what we said was like not fully correct. So here is a counter example for that. If you need, a, if you need a cube, like just take this. Thing. Okay. Yeah. So uh, after putting this value in this equation. You will get a, a equation in a B, C, D, I, and J, like all the uh, coefficients. And that's so, oh, can you please mute yourself, uh, or if you are asking me about? Yeah, thank you. So this will be something like k one B plus k two C plus so on till k nine J equal to zero. So what you can do is you can just remove B. We can let B as a uh, minus one by k one. K two C, so until K nine J, and we can write B in terms of C uh, till J. So we basically remove, uh, we basically lower down from nine dimension to eight dimensions. So if we say that a particular point lies on this cubic, we get one more dimension. Like we know, in, we have information about one dimension of the cube. So if I say like nine points lie on some cubic, I can just tell what the cubic is, right? So now, uh, what happens is uh, we have C one and C two as two cubics. Let's say their intersections are P one, P two, so on till P nine. And uh, there's a cubic C which passes through P one comma P two comma so on till P eight. So and we need to prove that uh, P nine also lies on uh, this cube. So uh, what can we say about C? Like what information do we have from these eight points? Uh, is it something like that the set of such cubics is in some sense one dimensional yeah exactly that's what it is so let's move on to here we have done this yeah so uh, if f1 x comma y equal to 0 and f2 x comma y equal to 0 are equation of c1 and c2 then uh, c will have basically uh, one dimensional because we already have information about eight dimensions of c so we just have like we need one more thing dimension to define c so in some sense uh, the set of all such c is one dimensional so this is, it's basically something like lambda 1 times f1 plus lambda 2 times f2 this is like a one dimensional thing okay so which means like for all lambda 1 comma lambda 2 Uh, lambda one times f one plus lambda two times f two is the equation of some cubic curve passing through p one so on till p eight. Now we need to show that uh, okay, so we got that uh, c is equal to lambda one times uh, f one plus lambda two times f two, where lambda one comma lambda two belong to real numbers or actually rational numbers because the coefficients are rational numbers. And we have that. Uh, this is the equation of cubic C one. This is the equation of cubic C two. We need to show P nine, which belongs to like uh, C one and C two, also belongs to C. Uh, how can we do this now from this? Thing?
Or how did we get the family of curves defining C? So see, the thing is, uh, when we have one point lying on a cubic, we get information about one degree of the cubic, one dimension of the cubic. Now we have that, eight, we know information about like eight dimensions of C, right? We have eight points lie on C. So we only need like information about one dimension of C. And uh, which means that the family of C, like family defining C is one dimensional, linear in some sense, if that helps. And this is a linear combination of the curves uh, on which eight points lie. That's why this works, lambda one F1 plus lambda two F2. Now you have that C is of the form lambda one F1 plus lambda two F2, uh, where F1 and F2 are equations of like, F1 x comma y equal to zero, F2 x comma y equal to zero, are equations of the curve C1 and C2. P9 belongs to both these curves. We need to show P9 also belongs to C. How do we show this? It's not a big argument, it's like a one liner if that helps someone. C of P9 is zero because it's zero plus zero. Yes. So uh, uh, what, he, what did he say is like, since P9 belongs to C1, so uh, when you put like, let's say the coordinates of P9 are X9 comma Y9. So F1 of X9 comma Y9 is zero, which means this thing is zero. Similarly, this thing is zero. So C of like uh, X9 comma Y9 is also zero, which means uh, P9 lies on C. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Go on. Do nine points uniquely define a cubic? Uh, can you say it again? Do nine points the uniquely nine points. Do nine points uniquely define a cubic? Yes. But well, then how can we have like two cubics passing through the same nine points? Because that's what C one and C two are. Oh wait. Uh. Right. Yeah, so like these are two cubes passing through like nine point something like this, right? Yeah, like whatever. Oh. One sec. Is it because like some of these points are giving the same info? Like they're like they're uh, not really. Like if they, if they are distinct points, then they should give distinct information. Oh right, that's actually also possible. But I don't see how is that possible actually. No. Uh, we have like nine variables and nine equations. Yeah, this should be the same cubic, no? But uh, like that's not uh, always true. So like, uh, let's say uh, these are three lines. You have three red lines and you have three green lines. E, e, there are total nine intersection points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I just say I have these nine intersection points and uh, what is a cubic passing through these nine points, then you can just consider the cubic like, uh, let's call this L1, L2, L3. You can just consider the cubic uh, L1 into L2 into L3 because this is like one degree, one degree, one degree. So like when you multiply them, then you'll get a three degree equation, right? 
Yeah, I guess so then it is just like multiple, multiple these equations are giving the same info, like some of them are linearly dependent. Yeah, that's possible. Okay, but uh, if they're linearly uh, dependent, uh, that doesn't help us in removing our variable, right? Yeah. Oh. We cannot always move a variable. Oh, by the way, I'm audible, right? Because it was just showing my internet connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're audible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, actually, it, it will still reduce the variable, but like, uh, what is it? I guess what Kelly Bakker is saying is that these nine points actually have eight. Have like degree of freedom eight, like they give us eight equations, eight linearly independent equations. Uh, right, that makes sense. That makes more sense now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So, like, uh, ignore that stuff if you didn't understand, but like, is the proof clear mainly? Like, how P9 lies if you get a linearly dependent, or if you get a not dependent if you get a like a linear family for C. Okay, so I assume it's a yes. So I look upon that part, like if they actually give like uh, nine equation and like eight are linearly independent, one is dependent. Okay, uh, so now let's move on to the final part of the lecture where we prove it's a group. So uh, here I'll give you like more time to think about the proofs because you can come up with them naturally. And uh, we also, uh, so for this thing, whatever we are doing right now, we assume that there exists at least one rational point on C which is known to us. And we have assumed that C is non-singular, which means that at any given point on C, you can construct a tangent, okay? So it's not something like, uh, so suppose if you have something like this thing, let's say curve is here, and then suddenly it goes to here. Uh, like if it's just continuous, then also you cannot construct a tangent at this point, right? Yep. So yeah. We first define a star function. Also, uh, just note that this is not the group function. Uh, so I'll just show you the formal definition once. Uh, P star Q, uh, suppose P and Q belong to a cubic C, then P star Q is the third intersection of the line joining P comma Q with C. And if P comma Q are rational points, then so is R. So we basically saw this thing in the uh, batches duplication formula thing. So let's say this is our random cubic and P and Q are two points. Then P star Q is like you join this thing and let it intersect again. Okay, this is a bad type. Let's say this thing, P, Q and R. Notice that a line is one degree, line has one degree cubic has three degrees. So a line and cubic will intersect in three points by Bezout's theorem. So P star Q will be another point R. Uh, is this clear? Like how we define the star function? And uh, obviously like as we did earlier, if P is rational and Q is rational, R is also rational. I already told how. Okay, so can anybody tell me how can we define P star P? Yes, tangent to P. 
So like uh, P and P, it's the same point. So we just draw tangent to P and uh, let it intersect at any other point. P dash, and this will be like intersection of tangent. <coughs> yes. Uh, I will draw P star P. Okay, so now uh, what's the issue with this thing? Like, why can't star be the group function? Okay, what's the issue with the identity element? Basically, you cannot define an identity element because like everything is symmetric, right? Nothing is in some sense fixed, right? And another issue is like associativity doesn't hold if I'm not wrong. Let's just check. Uh, if you have like P and Q, and another point R. Then we have to check if P star Q star R equal to P star Q star R. Okay, so for the first thing, uh, you get some point here S and then SR would be something like this. Somewhere here. Uh, for the second thing, this will be like uh, somewhere uh, okay. very weak diagram, but like just uh, get the intuition somewhere here, and then P star uh, this thing will go to here. So uh, this thing is the black thingy, and this thing is the uh, pink thingy. Clearly, these two points are not same, right? It's not an exact diagram, but good enough for like visualization. So do you see why associativity doesn't hold for this thing? Okay, I assume it's a yes. So now we define a group function. So what we do is uh, we have a we have this curve with us. We pick any rational point O. And uh, fix this point basically. Now, if plus is a group function, then P plus Q equal to O star P star Q. Uh, is the definition of the group function clear? So something like if you have this point P and this point Q, then P star Q is something uh, this. And then O star this is this thing. Let's say this is R, this is S. So in this case, P plus Q is equal to S. Or uh, is the definition clear to everyone? Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now uh, we say that this is a group function, and let's move on to proving that it's an abelian group. So let's just first prove commutativity. Like that's very easy thing to prove. Uh, we need to prove p plus q equal to q plus q. Take a minute or so and think like how can we do it's not very hard uh, here's the definition of p plus q if you want to see like 
the the lines are this like pq is equal to the line pq is the line qp so yes. r is the same and because r is the same or intersection of q yes exactly so p plus q is basically o star p star q and q plus p is basically o star q star p and by definition of star p star q is equal to q star p right because it's just the like third intersection of line joining p and q so like p and q and q and q it doesn't matter so we get that this is the same point r and then uh, we get this s okay uh i'll just erase this stuff i don't want to draw this again Right. Uh, any guesses on the identity element? Uh, what do you mean by the pole? Do you mean like this point, like the leftmost point? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Let's say like this is the identity element. Let's call it E. So if E is the identity element and P is a point, then by definition of identity element, P plus E should be equal to P, right? So P plus E is something this point. And uh, I mean, like this is P star E, and to get P plus E, you will take another intersection of this. Uh, this clearly doesn't look like P. This lies some somewhere here. You just try to visualize this. So this is not the identity element. Any other guesses? So is it O? Yes, exactly. Uh, would you like to tell how? Yeah, so uh, P plus O would be uh, first we do uh, P star O, which is take a line O from O P, which cuts the cubic at let's say some P, P dash. Yes. And then from uh, the line O P dash intersection, the cubic is P. Yeah, so this is like uh, we just define the line O P and it takes its third intersection. So this line intersects with cubic at three points, which are O, P, and P dash. So like O star P is P dash. And then this thing you do O star P dash, uh, this will be P. So P plus O is just P, which is also equal to O plus P because uh, we already showed this common So is this clear? Okay. I'll assume it's a yes. Uh, okay. Take Two or three minutes, think how you can define inverse of a point P. It's not Sorry, define what? Inverse. So, like yeah, uh, okay. you have a given point P, you have to find a mm -hmm. point P inverse such that P plus P inverse is equal to O. Oh, okay. Maybe like draw a tangent from O and let it cut the cubic at some point and then uh, draw that point and P and let that intersect the cubic at say yes. P inverse. Yeah, exactly. That, that's how you consider the inverse. So uh, what he said is you construct the tangent at O and let it intersect at a point S and then you draw, uh, draw P star S basically. That's the inverse. Uh, so uh, we claim that this is the inverse and let's now show that this is actually the inverse. So what will be P plus P inverse? This is O star P star P inverse. Uh, what is P star P inverse? It's S, right? Because this line intersects at three points, P inverse, P and S. 
So this is O star S. Now what will be O star S? Notice this green line. Let's call it L1. L1 intersects this cubic at O and S, but it should have three intersections, right? Notice that this is a tangent at O. So it has a multiplicity two. So it's basically O comma O comma S. So O star S, like O and S, we have two intersections. The third intersection is O only. So this is O. So you get P plus P inverse is O. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, it is clear. Right. Nice. Now let's move on to the last part, which is associativity, which I found quite nice. Wait, am I audible? Or it shows my internet connection. Yes, you're audible fully. I can fully hear you. Okay, nice. Okay. So now we need to show. I'll take it down. Okay, I'll take it down. P plus Q plus R equal to P plus Q plus R. I claim that this is equivalent to showing P star Q star R or oh, P star Q plus R equal to P plus Q star R. Uh, can anybody tell me why? Because if these are these points are the same, then O star this would be the same. Yeah. So if these two are equal, then what we can do is we can do like O star both sides. This should also be equal. And then by definition, this thing is like P plus Q plus R. And this thing is P plus Q plus R. All right. So we are reduced to showing this things are equal. All right. So now when we define this thing, P star Q plus R, what points do we use? We need Q, we need R. To get Q plus R, we also need Q star R. And then we finally get Q plus R. And to get P star this thing, we use P. Now to get this thing, what do we need? We need P, we need Q, we need P star Q, and we get P plus Q, and we need R. So in total, what points do we use? Combining these two things, let's just say union of these two sets. P, Q, R, P star Q, Q star R. Um, yeah, um, R plus Q. Yeah. Then it is in. Oh, we also need O to define this thing. Like if you have Q star R, how do you get Q plus R? For that you need O, right? So how many points do you actually need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And uh, then we need to show that these two points are equal. I'll show this with a diagram so that it makes more sense. Yes. So, uh, see this. Uh, to define this thing, P star Q plus R, you need first Q, you have R, you define Q star R, then you need the point O. Uh, you can see my cursor, right? Uh, yes, I can see it. Yeah. To get Q plus R. And then you also need P to get this point, uh, P star Q plus R. And then to define this thing, P plus Q star R, uh, what points do we use? We first use P, we then use Q, and we got P star Q. Then we used O to get P plus Q, and we ultimately used R to get this thing. So now, uh, notice one thing in this diagram. Um, 
Thanks, Sophie. Uh, ignore this yellow line, please. Notice that each of these points pass through a solid line, which is like this, and a dashed line, which is like this. So like P has this dashed line and this solid line. R has this dash, uh, solid line and this as dashed line. Q has this solid line and this dashed line. And similarly, all the other points you can check for yourself. Uh, notice that this point does not lie on the cubic yet. We have to prove. So basically, what we exactly prove is uh, the line passing through P comma Q plus R, and the line passing through R comma P plus Q. If we take their intersection. And prove that this lies on the cubic C. Let's call this cubic C. Uh, then we'll be done, right? Because if it lies on the cubic, then what is uh, this intersection? This is P star Q plus R, right? Oh, I'm audible. It's yes. for some reason. Yeah. And this will be R, R star P plus Q. And both of these points will be equal because these are intersection of two lines, right? And which intersect with the cubic. So does this make sense that we have to show that this solid line and this dashed line lie on the cubic? Yes. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Uh, there is one thing which we did in the lecture, but we haven't used it yet. And uh, I also like when we were uh, when I was giving an example. I drew that thing. Can you see it here? Yeah, like I think we can use the Kelly Bacharach thing yeah. and and the fact that the three solid lines as a collection form a three degree curve, which is a cubic, and the dashed lines also form a cubic. So let the solid the collection of solid lines form a cubic C one and the other. Uh, dashed one C two, then these two pass through nine common points, and the the real cubic the drawn in the figure uh, passes through the eight of these, so it must pass through the ninth. Yes, exactly. That's the correct. Thing. So what happens is, uh, uh, we consider the first cubic as the like. Let, let's say we have a line. The equation is a x plus b y plus c now if you multiply three lines can you see that this will be a cubic like this will have x cube yeah. uh, so yes it, it, see yeah. consider these three yeah so you consider these three lines this uh, I'll highlight it. uh this line uh and this solid line and this another solid line. Uh, this let's call this cubic C1. Similarly, the dashed lines, we call it as a cubic C2. They'll intersect at nine points. What are the nine points? One point, second point, third point, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, Seven. and this is the ninth point. We still don't know if this is equal to this, but this is some nine intersection. We consider this cubic C, which we had. It passes through eight of these nine points, uh, basically these ones. O, P star Q, Q star R, Q R P, Q plus R, P plus Q. So by Kelly backer up, if this cubic passes through eight of these nine points, it should also pass through the ninth point, right? So the ninth intersection, like intersection of these two lines also lies on the cubic, which is what we wanted to prove. So we are done with associativity. Uh, any doubts you can ask in that situation. I'll wait for a moment.
Wait, so is P plus Q into R is equal to P into Q plus R? Yes. Ah, okay. That's what we think, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we are done with proving that the, this is an abelian group. So like rational points on a cubic curve form an abelian group, which is a pretty decent property. Like there are like random rational points lying on a curve and they form a nice algebraic structure. Okay, and then there is a last point on the choice of O. I said like pick a random O, it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter. So for uh, those of you who know like the group theory, then uh, this is a isomorphism from group uh, rash, like Q of C just do not like rational points lying on the cubic C. And uh, this O is identity element and plus is a group function. So like isomorphism from this group to this group. Plus dash is uh, the new addition law, which is defined as something like this. So P, uh, it's actually like the same way. Oh, uh, okay. P plus star Q is O dash star P dash Q. And we say that this thing holds. So to visualize like what minus O dash means, we can consider this equation. Uh, what's the equation? I'll get it. P plus dash Q plus O dash. O dash is like a new identity element in the isomorphic map. This should be equal to P plus Q. Now, uh, P plus star Q is O dash star P star Q plus O dash. This thing is equal to uh, O star O dash star O dash star P star Q, right? Uh, what is this thing? O, o dash star, O dash star, P star Q. So let's say uh, on this cubic, P star Q is just like R. This is R. And this is a point O star. O star R is S. Then O star o, o dash star R is S. This thing is S. So now what is O dash star S? This will be R, right? So this thing will be basically oh bar I yeah so this whole thing will be O star P star Q which is just P plus Q. So is this thing clear how this holds? Right. And this is how it's like group by isomorphism. And uh, there are a few technical details which I wrote. Uh, uh, this I already told you. And yeah, when, when I said like uh, when P is a point of inflection, it has multiplicity three, right? When you draw a tangent through that. So, P star P is equal to P. So uh, basically, if you have call of something like this, and this is our point of inflection, let's say, then this is multiplicity three. So what happens is uh, P star P is just P itself. Does this make sense? Yeah. Nice. So uh, when we were doing this like uh, group stuff, we assumed that we didn't pick the point of inflection at first. Because let's say the point which we know on this thing is just the point. Only like draw a tangent to get a new point. 
but this tangent also is not giving you a new point because p star p is just p so this will like not at all helpful to us so this was an assumption which i didn't mention earlier but we are not picking point of inflection at first and uh this is a point which someone else told me that proof of absolutity doesn't work uh when these things are not in their general position so for that like you can fix this but you have to just change the order of stuff like solid line and dash lines things which can be done manually yeah so i just included like the general case which is like usually given in books also so yep that was it to the lecture uh i'll be here for like four or five minutes if you have any doubts and then we can end early I hope you liked the lecture and if you have any and if you do not have any notes you are free to leave thanks a lot for attending me i'm not a bad smell uh no i have not been on the indian i am team yet Uh, I'll stop recording, but I'll stick around if you have doubts.